Hello there, chatbots and voice assistants are one of the most important tools in today's and especially in tomorrow's world, but who are the people behind them, the conversation designers? My name is Aran Soroka, Head of Marketing Operations at uh, Coco Hub Conversational Components. Today we have a special guest from Cape Town, South Africa, Nick Thompson. Nick is a conversational AI, custom integrations, and self-proclaimed bot overload. It got me. <laughs> How are you, Nick? <laughs> I am very well, thank you. Um... It's the the whole got got bots <laughs> the the whole bot overlord thing is a bit of a joke, okay. um, because I actually so I started up in account management. I don't I don't have any previous tech background, and I I came into the company really just having a, a fascination about AI, and um, the, the 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 reason I actually got into it is because of that Black Mirror episode. I'm not sure if you've watched it. So I, so I think it's called, I, think it's called I, I heard about it a lot. Yes, so so it's really the idea, the Be Right Back episode is the idea of containing a personality or breaking down a personality based on data that a person has created. And um, kind of went around, about, around um, down a bit of a rabbit hole, learning about the creator of um, that Black Mirror episode. And it was based on someone who actually created an, uh, a chatbot off of their, their friend who had passed away. They used a lot of messaging logs. And I didn't really know anything about AI, about chatbots. I didn't have any coding experience before I worked at Godbots. But um, I started as an account manager and very quickly started finding myself very fascinated with um, just the intents and context and structures and how certain words can move people down certain flows. And the the whole got the bot overlord title came out of a meeting that we once had where, and they asked me, so I mean, what do we even call you? <laughs> and I'd been playing a lot of StarCraft too. So I was like, uh, maybe bot overlord, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> And they were like, I was, I was just joking about it. And they, they were like, okay, cool, totally. That is 100% what we're going to call you. So, so it stuck, yeah. And now I found myself in conversation design. I've been doing it for about two years now. And it's, it's just been such a fascinating um, project, really, because I think with there's so many different applications of AI and chatbots. And I think that it's genuinely helping so many companies at the moment. Like we can see that companies are becoming more efficient. Like that's one of the biggest reasons why it's actually such an easy product to sell because it's something along the lines of, do you find that your customer service staff are overworked and are making mistakes? Great, well, a chatbot can help you. And um, what we found has been really helpful, at least with our, um, with our so the, the platform we use has live agent functionality as well as a chatbot. And I think the thing that is so great is being able to be in a, in a job where you're doing something which you can see is improving the efficiency for the clients that you're working for. Mm -hmm. And um, when you, like, for example, for us, we see that customer service times that were previously like five minutes for an average response are being broken down to less than a minute, where users are able to ask questions now that are a lot quicker to be resolved and they don't need to phone and it just makes companies a lot more efficient. So for us, it's been so exciting, obviously, because there's so many people who want the type of solution. But um, one of the hiccups is that I'm not sure how, how much work uh, you guys have done with Facebook Lite, but um, Facebook Lite and Facebook Messenger Lite do you, have you guys had any experience with this? Um, less. We're having like a regular Facebook, I think. Yes. So the, the thing with South Africa is that there's so much like potential and Johannesburg and Cape Town are really like trying to innovate and there's so many amazing thinkers. The problem is just that our kind of internet infrastructure is probably about like five years behind everywhere else. So um, it's downloading stuff off your data plan or listening to Spotify when you're not connected to a public Wi-Fi, you don't ever do that here because it's so expensive. So what that means is that Facebook has actually created an app that is used to reduce bandwidth for Facebook and for Messenger. But the problem with that is that it removes all of the payloads from the buttons. Oh. So, so where previously you could click a button and be directed to an in intent or whatever you wanted to, when the user on Facebook Lite clicks the button, it removes the payload and just puts the copy in. Okay. So we have we we have a lot of 
things that happen and then clients are like, but why is this happening? And then we have to like try and figure out a way to try and use Facebook like a normal person, but the, the user's obviously using a different platform, which isn't um, configured as well as it could be. So yeah, I mean, we've seen, we've seen fantastic growth, not just in our business, but um, also just in the markets. I think there's so many people who are having great experiences with chatbots that if their competitors are doing it, they wanna do it. Um, so it really is it's such a it's such an honor to be in such a cool industry, but also because I have no background. I I literally met with the owner of the company. I was kind of tired of my previous job, and I was just like, I need something new. I need something um, more interesting that I could kind of commit myself to. And I asked them if I could meet with them, and then end up getting a job. And that was two years ago. And it really has been like um, such a great time because since then I've been able to um, actually move myself into the, the lead conversation design uh, role, but I'm also building a lot of the integrations now for our clients. So if we need to go in and fetch uh, tax certificate information or whatever it is, um, we can build the integration into our clients and I'm doing that now. So um, it really has been a fun, it's been a fun two years because I've been there just under two years now. Yeah, so one of our clients told me, I won't lie, you're in the forefront of technology right now. Um, th this is, you're very right. This is the feeling that we are in the best place in the best time for this technology to explode. Uh, what is the chatbot or the project that you're most proud of, of all the things that you've done? There, there too. So there's there's one that we have that is impressive because of the high volume. So um, one of our clients, we built a bot that facilitates uh, Facebook ads communication. So their Facebook campaigns that are going out and then users will select and then use payloads when they click the button. So they obviously get directed into a specific part of the chatbot. Unfortunately, Facebook Lite doesn't work like that. So um, this has been one of our biggest clients that has also been aimed, at the, their target audience is a very high Facebook Lite audience. Mm -hmm. So it's been very complex because we've had to stay on top of Facebook developer notifications and trying to just um, make sure that whatever happens on Facebook site doesn't affect a live production clients. And I mean, for, for some perspective on the volume. So I don't know exactly what type of volumes you guys deal with. Um, but on our side, this bot is on average between 200 and 250,000 unique users a month. And what that tends, so it's it's ac it's actually just um, how, how we kind of see the project is that there's advertising, which is the top of the funnel. And then the bot kind of just facilitates the part of the funnel and then spits out whatever is validated. So this, this uh, bot is connected to multiple Facebook campaigns. It then directs users through a certain flow and then it validates information. The bot then um, hands that over to the company who then contacts the user for, to close the sale. And for generally what we're doing is about, it's about 1,500 to 2,500 validated leads a day. And if you're looking at it over a year, it obviously adds up quite a bit. So, yes. no, totally. So, so, and also the thing that that's also why it's so easy really with clients is they can see now that if they spend X amount on advertising revenue, that it will, it will, it's percentages. You can literally just see like the waterfall charts and they know that we're going to get these clients, these leads are worth this much to us in customer lifetime value. So it really is like an exciting process but the volume is so big in that client that we've actually needed to completely update how we do our infrastructure. So our team, the team at Godbot is absolutely amazing. We are, they, they really are such a nice group of guys to work with, but we're also trying to innovate so that our software is cost effective for us. So we've had to kind of, because there's been such a big client, we've had to completely rebuild our infrastructure. So now we've had to move to microservices and a Kubernetes type uh, infrastructure just so that it can handle more variances in the um, user traffic and I mean for me that is definitely I'm so proud of that because that's been a combined team effort the the other projects on my side isn't as impressive um, but it was built completely by myself with my my and my not really understanding code um, when I started it and understanding a lot about code when I finished it was um, it is a live database, which is um, 
can, it's a database that a lot of people are currently working on and the bot essentially finds um, certain types of information from that database based on the entities that are set up to then match the certain types of text that the user would then say, I'm looking for uh, like a butchery or a, a, this type of dealer, whatever it is, it's more, it's like an FAQ bot that is connected to a live network. So for me, that has been so cool, not just because it's quite technical, but because I've been working with um, such an amazing client who, um, he's, he's a bit of an older man, but I feel almost like he's my uncle, like we'd be sitting around a barbecue or whatever. And he's like, you know, Nick, can we do this thing? And I'm like, we can totally do that thing. <laughs> and and um, every every like new step, he's like, and what if we had to do it like this? I'm like, you know what? With natural language processing, we can do it like this. And he is so excited. So for me, it's, it's really been like, uh, it's been a cool project because I've been so central to it, but also because it's so much fun kind of exploring how um, NLP, in this case, natural language processing, can really be used. And and um, what's so cool is that I've had to obviously explain how contexts work, how entities work, how you need to set them up so that we can manage them. It's It's been a really cool process of actually like kind of joining with the clients where I know what I know what our chatbots can do, but we kind of like we started out and then we start exploring to like whatever the next step is. And it's such a it's such a cool thing to do. And I'm sure you've seen this on your side, your guys content and, and the, the updates you, you keep making to the platform are awesome. And I, I think the thing is, it's, it's so it's so cool being able to kind of start somewhere and then continually improve it. And I think that's the one thing that I actually um, I remember a lot from what Yaki once uh, he said. I can't remember which which um, video it was. It was it was one of the videos. But essentially, he was saying that the best way that you can really learn from something is when there's a fallback, because that shows you this is a problem. Yeah, and it's so cool being able to kind of start at a minimum viable product with a client and kind of evolve it into this thing which is extremely customized. And it's very satisfying, obviously, watching this thing when you're seeing, because I think the true test is, does it work at volume? <laughs> and, totally, yeah. Uh, and what's the most important thing uh, for a chatbot, for, in your opinion? This thing about the volume, um, if it, or something else? I think, look, the, the best thing really for a chatbot, I mean, there's ideally, I what I would love is for every chatbot to be super sassy so that you can say, please give me give me this information and she'll say, sorry, you didn't ask. You didn't say please. <laughs> or you know what I mean? Like that kind of I think I think the thing that that's so fascinating because I so my my um I really want to build a chatbot which is helpful to humanity eventually. Like I think there's there's definitely a difference between what we build kind of commercially for our clients, because you can't you can't have a bot that's not very politically correct if you're building it for a client. But if you're building it for yourself or if you're building it for your own project, it's something that you have a lot more freedom with. So I think for me, one of the things that I think is to give someone a unique or believable experience with a chatbot is it should be, I think, um, something that which, which would disagree with you is a lot of a lot of bots are so agreeable and i think um you know um ex machina the that movie the alex garland movie a while back mm -hmm. i'm not sure if you watched this i didn't watch it but i i heard about it yes it's it's definitely very very worth watching because it it, it, it kind of talks through um what what it's like for a human to encounter like super intelligent ai and what I found was so believable about the character Ava there was that she kind of butted into the question sometimes. So, so he, um, the, I can't remember what his name was. I think it was Caleb. He'd be busy talking and she'd stop him or he would say something and she'd say no. And I think that's, I think, I think that's, that's something which is quite cool. Like that's, that's what I like about um, Mitsuku as well is that Mitsuku is very sassy and um, it's something which I think is quite believable because humans are quite sassy. You know what I mean? It's like it's a human, it's a human thing to like kind of prod and play and have that fun. And I think that um, 
the, unfortunately, it's not really something that you can build for like a multinational brand unless yeah. that's part of their kind of unless that's part of their plan. What is the funniest thing that happened to you while uh, designing chatbots? The, uh, the most awkward thing maybe. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not really funny. It's definitely awkward and difficult. Um, it was probably about two, about two or three months into my new job where um, I merged two of our biggest bots, NLP agents together in Dialogflow uh, by accident in a production and environment. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and so that definitely wasn't funny, but it was, it, it was, it was an interesting situation. And we obviously resolved it. I'd made, I'm a, I like preaching backups and my colleague Craig McLeod as well loves preaching, make sure that our backups are 100%. And I had done my, my backups the day before, so I was fine. But so I think it that- It sounds like all the chatbots started talking with each other and like creating so, singularity. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just, it was a bit strange the way that it was done. Like it's, we knew that there was a problem immediately. Obviously it was quite a quick resolution, but I think the, I think that the thing to kind of learn from that is that the, the, the technology is quite easy to get into now, but there's so many different moving parts that it's like, it, you mentioned it earlier, that um, getting into this kind of industry is obviously very viable financially because there's a lot of people who are looking for something to make them more efficient or something which is going to be a better better thing for their users to see. And I think the 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 reality is that with with building something like that, a lot of the time there are going to be some failures. Sometimes things are actually just going to break. Like mm -hmm. it's it's there's this big goal that you're going for and technology changes. Like Google went down the other day. So I mean if Google goes down it can happen to anybody. <laughs> it can happen to anyone. So I think the I think the cool thing is that clients generally on our side, like sure, everyone makes mistakes, everyone goes through their, their failures and stuff. But I think the the thing that's really cool is that a lot of clients understand that when you're gra when you're trying to play around with technology that's relatively complex, there are lots of things with dependencies. And I mean, even just getting into the technical stuff, I don't understand really with how our guys build stuff and there's dependencies and all these crazy things that connect together stuff breaks yeah. and um yeah so i don't know if that's a funny thing but that's definitely one of the things that i look back and i was like and what is so cool is that the team we, we just moved together quickly solved the problem spoke to clients sorted the thing out and i think i think it's really cool also there's a lot of guys um who are in this field now who are who who don't have any previous experience so generally in our company um with with godbot like a lot of the time we're kind of grouping together to try and dream of what the next step is, but not really sure how we're going to get there. Yeah. And um, and we, we're delivering so much that I think a lot of the time there's thing. If you want to make an omelet, you've got to break some eggs. Like that's yeah. that's the thing that I kind of think. That's for sure. So so what what else do you want to tell about the Godbot? I don't know. I mean, it's. I, I think Godbots at the end of the day is building. It's a solution that's relatively, relatively similar to a lot of what all of us are doing. It's. It's mm -hmm. trying to build. It's trying to build a conversational interface to to improve the lives of your brand's users. Mm -hmm. And I think that's. I mean, that's something that I've seen across the whole voice community is that everyone is actually trying to do their best thing in their kind of niche. And the, the thing really, I mean, it's not really about Godbot at the end of the day. I think I'm far more like, I, I'm super passionate. I definitely love Godbot. I'm going to be there long term. But I think what is, what would be really cool to chat about is actually how, how easy it is to get into this industry. Because it's, it's kind of like when there was the website boom forever ago, and then there's the Bitcoin boom. And it's almost like the early adopters a lot of the time have the most potential to kind of benefit from it. And I think, I mean, my, I'm, I'm quite a good case study of not understanding anything beforehand. Like I've spent most of my life in digital marketing and just deciding I want to change and applying myself. I think the, the cool thing is that anyone can actually get into it. It's, it's because it's not like people have been, there have been people who've been doing it for a very long time, but there's not a lot of them. So, 
so if you know what you're talking about and you're interested in it, I think that so many companies are looking for that, looking for that kind of talent who is willing to kind of just learn and adapt to challenges. But it's so exciting and it's so rewarding as well that um, all, all you really need to know is how to build, like, I mean, just plan. The most complicated part of it is if you can draw, if you can draw on a page, the conversation and all of the options, that's really it. If you can do that, learning to program that into whatever your system is mm -hmm. actually isn't that difficult at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's something that is so cool. And I've actually, I've also been doing something recently um, is I've been running learn to code workshops. Nice. So, so what I've done, it's been so, it's been so awesome because what I've found is that there's so many people who have had a very difficult 2020 and who don't know what to do and they've either resigned or they've been told to leave their companies and they don't know what to do. And for me, the thing is, sure, you're not going to be able to go to a workshop and then apply for a job. But if I, and what I've done in these workshops have, the, the point has really been to get people, it's been an introduction to Python. And I've shown people how to like create like certain shapes and then you offset them and you, and the, the idea really is to teach functions, loops and variables. Mm -hmm. And what has been so awesome is that every, I've had three workshops in the past month. And what's been so great is every single person has understood it. Every single person has been able to write their own code and run their own code. And I think there's so much like, and, and the thing is there's so much like almost fear and hesitance of going into something technical because we feel that it's going to be this insurmountable task that we'll never be able to do. Yeah. But the reality is that you can just start small. Start with, I like building conversations. And then if you want to, move into JavaScript, start building webhooks. If you want to start building your own NLP stuff, start going to TensorFlow. Like there's so many like fun applications that if you just learn something now, and you try and learn something again tomorrow, you'll continually be improving. So for me, that's actually a passion is, I think within, I think globally, but also with, for me, within South Africa, there's a lot of poverty, but there's also so much potential because it's like a beautiful country. There's so many things that, that can be done. And I think that's education, but um, education mainly focused around technology is such a, it's such a healthy thing for people to try and get into because the potential is unending. Like if you know how to, if you know how to use Python, you like, what can't you do with Python? You can probably like connect to a coffee machine, coffee machine with a library created specifically for Python yeah. because there's a community of people who are trying to work together to build something great. So learning to code is kind of just saying, I want to join the, that team because I like what they do rather than I want to know everything because you can't. Okay. So this was yeah. a very, very uh, fascinating talk for me. I also got Thank off you. the watching list, which watch list of things that I need to see now. Um, Nick Thompson, uh, got but thank you so much for being with us. An absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was, it was great to chat. Thank you. And for everybody watching, go check out CocoHub.ai where we bring chatbots to life. That's what do that. Yeah. Listen to him. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> okay. Really thank nice you. to chat to you all. Stay safe.